Welcome back to Washington Watch. I'm Joseph Backholm, your guest host today. Pleasure to be with you. The website is TonyPerkins.com, where you can watch this and every episode of Washington Watch whenever it is most convenient for you. In our last segment, we talked about the hospitals around the country that are performing gender surgeries on children, removing healthy body parts on minors. One of the hospitals covered in that investigation was Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. Last week, employees of the hospital were caught on tape stating that the hospital performs hysterectomies on children. The hospital has since denied that with a statement saying that the employees were mistaken. Well, our next guest was at Children's Hospital today, both to protest and raise awareness about these harmful treatments on children. Chris Elston is a father known to many as Billboard Chris. He travels the country with signs warning about the dangers of puberty blockers and surgeries for minors. And he joins us now. Chris, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. We got a crazy world going on. We need to talk about this. We do. We're glad to have you. Tell me, uh, why are you doing this? Well, I'm a dad of two girls. They're 10 and 12 years old now. And for about two years, I've been going out on the street having conversations with people. I probably had about 8,000 conversations to date. Because in Canada, where I'm from, none of the media will cover any of this. And I had learned a lot about this child abuse scandal, and I just didn't want to live in a world where this was going on. So I did the only thing I could do, which was strap some signs on my back and head outside. <laughs> You said you've had about 8,000 conversations now. How would you summarize those conversations? I'd, <laughs> so there's a big variance here, but definitely the vast majority of the population, I'd say a little more than 90% support what I'm doing. People of all political stripes, mm -hmm. all ages, all demographics, because it's not that controversial to say that we shouldn't be sterilizing kids. But of course, there is a very vocal minority who are very angry. A lot of them don't even understand what's going on and they try to silence conversation at any costs. And I've been attacked, I've been assaulted, I've been arrested, I've had my arm broken. But most of the society definitely supports what we're doing. We just need to get the truth out there because people have no idea what's happening. Now you've put yourself out there in a position to have a lot of conversations. And so you have interacted in a very personal way with a lot of the opposition on this issue. Those who think it's really good to give a child a hysterectomy because they think it's gonna help with their mental state. Um, how would you describe the typical opponent to your position on this issue? What's their, what's their reason for disagreeing with you? Well, believe it or not, the foot soldiers of this movement tend to be young liberal women. About 90% of the verbal abuse I get on the street comes from young liberal women. And these are the teachers, these are the social workers, the counselors, the people working in our HR departments. And they just really do believe that they're helping children to be who they really are. And they don't believe that children are being rushed into this medical treadmill of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries. They don't believe that kids are being sterilized or that surgeries are being done without parental consent on minors. They just think they're helping these kids to be who they really are. But they've never really thought past the surface. They don't understand that there really is no such thing as a transgender child. What does it mean for a girl to be a boy? No one can answer that question. And in the last 10 years, we've seen about a 4,000% increase in girls now identifying as boys. It's a social contagion going on. We haven't seen the same uptick with boys. It is increasing there as well. But this is really a social contagion affecting girls. And it's not a big controversy or it's not widely misunderstood, everyone knows that puberty is a tough time. And it's especially tough time for girls. And if you give them an out, which our teachers and these kids are being groomed on social media to believe that they can just identify out of their sex, well, if you give them that option, some are going to take it because they're being sold a lie that they can just transition to be a boy and everything's going to be better. You, know, you mentioned the fact that nobody can tell you what it means for a uh, boy to become a uh, or a girl to become a boy, but that's partly because nobody can tell you these days what a girl even is. So we don't know how to tell you what a girl is, and so we can't tell you how they can become a boy. And in around here, we talk a lot about the fact that this has to do with worldview. And you mentioned, and I think it's worth acknowledging, that the, our opponents on this side really think they're doing the right thing, which is one of the reasons they are so aggressive and so militant about this, because they really believe you and me and people who share our position on this issue that we are going to kill children if we don't allow them to get hysterectomies. And so they really think they are acting in defense of life. 
But, uh, and that's based on their assumptions that ultimately our life is kind of meaningless and purposeless, and there is no ultimate purpose to the way we were created, and only we can know what makes us happy, and only we can know what the purpose of our lives is. And it's just a very different worldview. It really is its own separate religion that leads them to these conclusions. But Chris, you were at Washington, uh, the Children's Hospital today there in Washington, D.C., um, what what happened today? Tell me about your experience. What'd you learn? So they knew I was coming. Security, they have their own private police. They were ready for us and they were extremely aggressive actually. I was standing about two feet off of the public sidewalk on the hospital sidewalk and I almost got arrested. A man was very angry with me, one of the private police officers. But they calmed down after a while and it's not the best place to have conversations, which is what I like to do because there's not a ton of foot traffic. But whatever you do, wherever you go, it's always creating good because what happens is the people inside the hospital see us and they start talking amongst themselves. They go, what's going on? There's a protest going on. Because the thing is, even in these hospitals, most of the doctors and nurses are not okay with this. What's happening in all these children's hospitals is you have this one little corner called the gender clinic staffed by five or six people and they're the ones doing all the damage to thousands of kids across this nation. And they're just ideologues. And you nailed it in yeah. your earlier comment. This is essentially a religion. I call it a cult. And one of the biggest indicators that it is a cult is the treatment that these children and young adults get when they leave it. When someone decides that they're not really trans and they decide to detransition or just identify as their actual sex, they are shunned by this community. They're kicked out. They are aggressively told that they were never really trans and they receive a ton of hate. So if, re if they were just wanting these kids to be who they really are, Shouldn't they also be celebrating them when they discover that they really are their sex? Yeah. They should be, but they're not because they just want to trans these kids. That's the ultimate objective. That's a really excellent point. And, and the detransitioners are treated terribly. Um, they are not given the same freedom to live their truth. Chris Elston, Billboard Chris, thanks for your courage. And thanks for coming on today to inspire us and, sh and share everything that you've learned. Thank you so much.